Hello, good morning. Welcome, everybody. We are here in the collaboration panel in times of change, and we are going to introduce ourselves so that we can start making a dynamic together with you where we're going to be able to talk about our experience regarding what we can do, if we can do something differently. So we will start with Fernando. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Thank you, Rox. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank for the invitation to this event. I hope that we can contribute on something. My name is Fernando Loera. I'm a project coordinator in the human rights here in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua. And well, our organization is a young organization, relatively. We have been working since 2013, where we have had other states and inside the north border here in Mexico. Normally, we work with the principle of no discrimination and equality in order to promote human rights and also to help on an integral defense for the human rights at the local and international level. And all this is by means of an establishment of different alliances with the government and also with international and national agencies. Our mission is to be an organization that is committed with the respect and the promotion of the human rights, especially for migrants and also for the population LGBTD. We try to safeguard the human dignity by means of social strategies, educational and legal ones. And all this is in order to reach this vision of being a solid and trusty organization and also acknowledge and renowned in the action field, All, always looking for the promotion of human rights. Thank you. Well, then I'm next, Rox. If you want, first of all, a pleasure to share this meeting with Fernando and with Rox. Thank you for the invitation. And I really like the collaboration topic. So we'll try to honor the title by trying that this session is also a collaborational session. So I invite everybody that is listening to write, to collaborate, to participate. My name is Marie Rosette. I am a current president of Civic House and Donar Online two initiatives that has a lot of, have a lot of to do with collaboration, technology, and innovation. Seek House is a community, a group of nine organizations, and we work together in Argentina, Colombia, and Mexico. We're in order to have the five reasons. for the acquisition of funds and the acquisition for the exits. And also we can think on the long term. The second one is that we offer our infrastructure network that is formalized, basically three people. Apart from processes and systems, especially for the organization and not the rest that is very necessary for the legal and for the finances issues. Also, we distribute this and as a good community as we are, we distribute all the efforts and we work together mutually. And lastly, and just to take advantage of this, in this space, to go together with a different type Within Seek House, we have nine member organizations. Among them, Wingwool, Change.org, Scenario, Transty, different organizations that are cutted with the technology. 
and that we all have in common to have the communication and the sustainable developments. And the last organization is lastly, Kuwait, as I already mentioned, and I left it till the end in order to give the floor to Rox. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Mario. Yes, well, so my name is Rox Munoz, and as Mario mentioned, I am part of Kuadili, and we are a NGO that is looking for the incorporation and to make the the incorporation of these practices in an nimble manner for NGOs and governments because we're trying to build up an ecosystem in which we're living. So I'm working since some months ago directly with HIP, so I'm very happy to be here because I know how strong and how difficult has been to organize this event and actually I'm very excited to get to know you because the previous panel was great and it sensibilized me and especially myself on this cause. And I'm gonna keep on working with him because I'm part of the M project. And the M project is a project that where we're gonna work with the different, um, the different hips, trying to reinforce in the way that we work in Coadili. I mean, how to extend the services and applications in order to have a better impact in the migrant people and people in different situations. I am very excited, as I already mentioned, of being here and to share this, what we have already experienced. And in order to start talking a little bit about to land in and to, to start taking, to start polishing this conversation, I would like to tell you a little bit of the different problems and challenges that we have faced as Coadili and as Rocks by collaborating during these times, especially in this last year of the pandemic. And for to us in Coadili, what happened is that it was a deacceleration, a total stop because all the organizations with which we were working, they needed to reorganize themselves and also ourselves, we needed to be allocated on the rhythm that we that this was happening. And one of the things that we needed to do is to have very clear and to set times and end times, deadlines on the things that we were doing, especially in terms of prioritization, because suddenly everything is urgent and suddenly nothing is urgent. So, so to start working on the value, to, because I'm working a lot with KEEP and to say, okay, which is the value that my work is contributing and to work to, to make deliveries, but only to by thinking on this value. So for example, we want to release the summit. We'll need to think and to start prioritizing. Um, I needed to work in Coadili and another friend said, okay, today is summit and that's it. We are going to give our best effort on summit. So it's very important to have this focus and to have very present that is based on the objectives. Another an, a human thing that I consider a lot, we are readapting and we can consider that one year is a lot or it is few but we are reaccommodating ourselves and we see this by being vulnerable and by supporting ourselves, by taking care of ourselves as team. Right now that we're talking about collaboration, this has been something very intense because same as you as being working on a migrant cause that is so po powerful. Sometimes you want to give more effort and to sleep late and if we do not start taking care of ourselves or we provide support, we always know that we have a lot of work and we do not ask for support or for help and this type of collaborations will never happen. So in order to summarize, focus, objective, being vulnerable and humble and to collaborate with each other in order to have a time, a good timing to do things and to reach success by priorities. I don't know if someone else would like to tell us about the problems and challenges for the collaboration and how you solve them. Thank you, Brock. Same, same as you, we are waiting a change and adjustment process in a constant manner. 
I think that for the last three, four years, they have been very challenging for our organization, starting from the increase of migrant flows, the, the people that is in movement and arriving, people on the move and that are arriving to the border brought a lot of challenges, especially because we were the only organization that was attending this um, part on the city. So actually many of the things that we started doing here started with the capacity of management and the organization capacity. So we started being exceeded in many things. And then I started thinking how to grow in an order manner, especially to start generating a lot of solid steps and not having, not reducing the margin in that sense. I think that the work that the organization has done has taken us to a lot of work and we are totally worn out in terms of load of work, a, a full mental health, because the part of being complex, maybe we can reach it, but always it's very important to try to work in these spaces in a very healthy manner. So I believe that this part has been changing a lot, but also in this manner, because sometimes we think that we are reaching a stability in the mental health and suddenly a lot of new things happen and that are allowing us to reconstruct ourselves and reinvent ourselves from projects, from the growth of personnel, from the internal organization plus COVID-19, right? That is like the cherry in the cake in all this scenario that it's very complex and that we have been learning about in the city. And now we need to start learning about the strategies in order to keep the quality of the service that is provided from the organization together with all the situations and the context that it um, We lost him. Yeah, he went out. Well, I may continue in line uh, of what he was saying while we wait for him to come. I like that he's talking about the, the cherry of the cake as the COVID-19. And I was thinking how it was collaboration pre-COVID, especially indoors. And especially the people that are listening to this, uh, maybe sharing the same experiences because many of this collaboration had a spontaneous component of things that were in conversations next to your colleague or in a, during lunch. And from all of a sudden, we stop having interaction between each other. So it would be maybe worthy to start sharing some of the strategies that we start testing in order to fill the gap with two components, especially during this last year, that was very tiresome for all the people. It seemed that this wasn't the best year to innovate and to run big risks because the world was in risk already and to get involved into big risk is in a situation like this one, it could be complicated. So by considering this and by reinforcing what Fernando was mentioning, that we needed to take care of this internally as a team and with other organizations with different alliances in order to foster our collaboration. And this is how I will share four or three things that have been very good to us. The first is to per, uh, regarding personal care. During the first weeks here in Argentina, we had a very tough quarantine and it was very early. So we tried everybody have at home something as similar as the condition similar as that they will have here in the office. So we went with a truck to look for all the chairs in the office that were in that, that space. And we start distributing them in the houses of everybody uh, that were in the team and that they wanted to have this uh, chair or the support for the computer or maybe any other thing that they will have in the daily working life. And this was some of the hard stuff. But then 
in terms of personal issues and how to generate collaboration, we will not have collaboration if we focus completely in just one topic. So we went in each of the sessions where we participated more than two people, or even though when we are only two, we allowed during the first 10 minutes to open, to talk openly about the live here. This is how we chit chat a little bit. This is how we call it in Argentina. And I just lost my cell phone in a team meeting. So I would consume nine or 10 minutes about that experience in certain manner uh, that will make us closer and humanize us that behind the screen, there are things that are happening to, to everybody. And in our opinion, when we share this type of experiences, there are less barriers in order to generate a different type of collaboration. And I can share many other things, but just to wrap up my intervention right now and to to collaborate while I'm also trying to extend the time while we are waiting for Fernando, I think that there is another relevant thing here and we can keep on, on helping during this hybrid. Some people are going to the office, some others are meeting with people. And one of the things that we saw that it didn't work at all was that mean in the video calls that we were used to have a box within a Zoom and your own camera. What, hap what would happen if there is more than three people in one camera? I mean, in hybrid meetings. In our experience, this wasn't good for collaboration. It was against the space, the respect, respect, the active listening, not because of lack of intention, but because of something that was proper for of the dynamic. Uh, we discovered that it wasn't so sovereign when we were in a hybrid environment. It was better to be whether everybody in person or everybody online. And also with the online team, for example, we allowed ourselves, and I believe that it was at the end of January or first uh, beginning of February, to make like a type of retirement and to see each other with all the hygiene protocols and taking care of ourselves as, as well. We allowed ourselves to have a meeting within these days, and Fernando is here. And within these two days, in person with all this working group and to see each other again, generated an infinite number of ideas of new ways to continue our collaboration. So it was in behind closed doors and i'm saying this that i'm a great defender of the digital world but if something we learned in this pandemic during this pandemic is that these face-to-face -face meetings are very relevant and maybe we're not gonna be able to do it all the time maybe we'll not back to uh, the pre-covid times but if we want to continue with the collaboration we'll need to find a mechanism to have face-to-face -face meetings in a recurrent manner in order to reinforce this strategy. Very interesting, Maria. I also have some good practices to add on this regard. We started working in common areas, but in silence working in the same thing but in silence and we will open the microphone whenever we needed something and this was very good because we're a team that are in three different countries and suddenly these schedules for example i that i am in mexico I was three hours in the past, so I have already waked up in Argentina and it was different to coordinate. So 
this part of being together and also to work in distance uh, with messages, etc. It turned out very important to find the rhythm. And this is how we establish a mechanism to say, okay, I already finished today because we already know that activities are done and we will need to send this information in a different platform that we started implemented. That is Discord instead of WhatsApp because WhatsApp, you have it for all the families. So we know that the things of work, except from the urgent ones, um, will be in Discord. That were like different hacks that we started to do. Fair, do you want to wrap up what you were saying? And maybe then we can start with the Q&A. Thank you, Rox. Thank you, Mario. And an apology. This is part of the things that we need to deal with with this new normal and remote or distance working. I would like to share some things more. I was saying that the process has been complete and especially because the work at our organization has a lot of things to do with the enabling of services. So this remotely is very complex to be done. So we have looked for ways or strategies that could adapt well especially to these requirements, to these health requirements in order to keep on having the field work. Our organization hasn't stopped. We hadn't stopped our services, just that we have reduced the reaction capacity in order to have a better taking care measures that would allow us to take care of the people that we work with and also the team. And the other thing is that the difficulties of the collaboration is also, it may be difficulties of having internet access. So those are big challenges that the organization has had and that within collaboration with some other organizations that are already in the city since maybe two years ago, we started consolidating a very important base reaction base in order to keep on offering our services. So this is part of our experience that we have had in here in the city, in the processes and in the, the things that we have done. Yeah, thank you, Brooks. Well, I'm going to write down in the chat a link to a survey. To see which are the urgent topics that you are having within your organizations and in regards of the collaboration, this collaboration that we are experiencing right now in changing times. So I'm going to share with you for a moment. and. If you can send this link also in the English website, also an open question, which are the problems and challenges that you have had to collaborate? You can answer anonymously. If you want to write your name, you can write it, but if not, you can also do it anonymously. And also after the answers are released, we are going to have some hands so that among the people that is here, to see which is the conversation that we may have. So the donors conversations, uh, we it was difficult to give follow up. So here you can write down and we will have three, four, three minutes to write down everything that you may want to write and then you can like or unlike and we can have like a poll on the things that you have uh, as challenges, the most frequent challenges. Is what you were saying that a lot of people does not does do not have the infrastructure, the basic equipment. How we can help this to happen? Only maybe to give them money to load it into their phone and to make a recharge. Yes, for example, within the services that we give is to make an, an accompaniment for the information technology. So a lot of people that is there 
do not have access to a telephone, to an eco equipment, to tablet, to telephone, and even to data. So the organization has to adapt itself so that the people can have an access to a space where there is internet, where there is a computer, and that they can give compliance to this part of the services. The challenge has been big and it hasn't been easy to solve it because most of the things that we need to serve means um, use of resources and expenses as well. And here is where we find an area of opportunity with the alliances and with the different allies, uh, organizations that are supporting us or that are uh, giving us money in order to serve these needs that are being arising. Excellent. Also in other organizations in which I have collaborated, they have been talking about the development of tools that could keep without internet. And whenever you get online, then you upload the information and update the information. These are also some of the challenges that the technology organization such as Wingo has helped us to, to solve. If you see at the screen, we have already four answers. Oh, already we have more. That's good. And now we, I invite you to vote, to send the poll in order to see how we can start um, conversating in this, in this panel. Then we'll know how much we know, and if not, we'll change the topic. Thank you, Sandra. They just sent the link. Yes, because we don't have any answer in English. Is the online tools that are that you are suggesting to collaborate in distance or remotely? And it has a lot of votes. As you just mentioned that the link was uh, sent in the translation session, maybe you can keep on writing on the English uh, on English on this session, and maybe we can check again once again how many votes do we have here in order to consider also the, that session. So thank you for the translation support. They didn't order it. New top. This is not working. Okay, yes. We have to, which is the online tools that you suggest for distance collaboration and the planification with focus. Which one do you want to start? Which one would you like to choose, Mario and Fernando? Well, if you want with the tools, because the third one, I think that it makes reference also to the tools. So there are a lot of tools or infinite or finite. And I will share the ones that help us the best to us. And the main tool that we're gonna use is uh, for the collaboration, remote collaboration, is to make sure that people have access to the internet. So uh, the first tool that I was mentioning is Mural. I have a link over here. And this platform allows us to, to visualize a board, like as if we were in, uh, in front of people, we have a board with the little pins and uh, notes. And so this tool is very graphic, very visual. So this tool for us is one of the, one of those tools that has been very helpful. We can gather 15, 20, 200, 500 people at the same time interacting in one single screen where they can collaborate, they can uh, interact, exchange ideas. Of course, uh, it's necessary to have someone, some facilitator or trainer to guide us on how to use this. But uh, 
it's a good idea to meet there. I don't know if every day, but at least every week. And, and that's it, interact there. There's another one. Uh, you know, uh, there you can also create some charts, some graphs. You can complement, you can enter some information, you can edit your link. And there's another one that's called Slack. This call, that's another one that we mentioned. That one is also very strong. And this is another collaboration tool for the team. And uh, everything that has to do with internal work, you can visualize it there. It's very simple. Actually, it looks like a chat. So in that way, the processes can be very agile and you can uh, integrate other tools like Mural or other ones that have been very helpful. What I was telling Rox during the first round of presentations is that we are able to visualize in sync all the rounds. It's not necessary for people to be connected at the same time. I can ask a question in one of these platforms or tools, and whenever another person has a chance to read that question, the person can answer it or can edit or can uh, write a note or something. So it doesn't matter if they answer the question a couple hours after it was asked. So it, it is very good to share. Okay, so Mario mentioned Discord. Quadili, that's another one. That's the first time that I worked there and it's like a bunch of circles and I can visualize the six people that I work with every single day. And it's very nice because we have advisors, we have trainers, we have the colleagues. So we have different circles that support Quadili in achieving the objective. Prior to this tool, we were using chats, WhatsApp groups, emails. So Discord was very helpful for us because it gives visibility to anyone. Anyone can see what's happening in the community or what projects we're handling at the moment. So this was a change in culture and in mind. It's not easy to, to leave, forget about your WhatsApp because it's what we were using the whole time. So now what we encourage people to do is to pick a tool, to experiment, to play with the tool and to, to give it a try in order to keep our communications going. And there is a reason why. What is moving us to use this platform? Because obviously the change is not gonna be, or it's not gonna happen from one day to the other, or just because we are buying the license or, or something. In this case, Quadili is for free. We're not paying that one. But anyways, we are investing time. We are trying to change the culture. So that is my advice. Pick one tool, play with it, and remind people, hey, we are, we are innovating with the tools. We also started using Utrack. This tool organizes the tasks that you're doing at the moment, the ones that are pending, what are some of the challenges or obstacles and visualizing those obstacles is actually very important for people and we have also space to talk about those obstacles or challenges that we're facing when completing the tasks so it's very good thank you Rox. the organization work with the team actually has to do with the use of Telegram, WhatsApp. In our case, we haven't innovated in with these new tools 
But after listening to you, yeah, I think it's a good idea to try those new tools. We haven't had the chance to actually do it, you know, to change, to make the change. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. The timing is different for everyone. I am going to share my screen. Would you like to close with this subject or are we ready? We're talking about planning and focus. It's not easy. It wasn't easy. Drugs, would you like to begin? All right. So I was, as I was telling you, this is one of the everyday challenges because at the end of the day, we are people who are working in different projects and we're doing different tasks. And at the same time, you have to execute all of these simultaneously. We have a, a practice that is uh, key results and we need to gather at the end of the quarter in order to define those objectives that are the most relevant and how to measure those. This is a practice that requires time and adaptation to Quadili. This is the third uh, meeting and we're still learning some tricks there. And understanding how these objectives helps us uh, help us become independent and decide what needs your attention at, at that given time, you know, and guide us in our decision making process. So that part is very important so that the team and people become independent, that you don't need to have three meetings in order to discuss the tasks or the goals. So we only meet every quarter and we define these objectives and it's a good practice that has worked for us. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to build on what Rox said. I, I shared the link with some cases uh, about some organizations with civil house. And I think that one of the most valuable things of this kind of models and focus is uh, the collective building of these objectives. When there is the objective of the organization that comes from the highest top of the hierarchy, it's difficult for other people to dimension that. So. We need to think how we're going to measure our, our, pros, our, our progress if we're doing things right. Maybe we have good strategies. Maybe we need to implement some initiatives in order to move those indicators towards efficiency, to be as efficient as, as possible. I love this, this method. It has brought great results. And talking about time, time is not unlimited. So if we do this every three months, as Rox told us, this forces you to reflect on the things that are working and the things that aren't. So you reflect on that all the time. You have this discussion with your team. How can you accelerate the change? So this type of planning is very, very nice. It's very helpful. In our case, we use a tool. Now that we're talking about tools, Koan is the one that we use with K, Koan. And this one helps us put all of your objectives, objectives for each month, and the way in which you're gonna measure them. And we integrated that with Slack, which is our internal channel of communication. And what the tool does is that every week we get an 
automated message, all the team gets this message. So the message includes information about last week work and how that relates with our objectives for this new week. And it's very interesting when you complete all the tasks that you needed to do last week, maybe those tasks were wonderful, but they didn't have anything to do with the objective, you know? So that's why the system, and by system, I don't mean the tool, but the team, the work team. The work team helps uh, guide you in the right direction, you know, like head back into the right direction in order to achieve your goals. And, and so having this conversation is very important and sometimes it is very challenging. Everything is important, of course. In our organization, everything is important in order to achieve a positive change in society and in terms of human rights, in terms of migration. So having this conversation, agreeing what the goals are, what we need to do at that moment is very important in order to achieve the change. It is, again, very challenging, but you need to do your best when you are prioritizing your, your tasks and everything because time is not unlimited. Okay, in our case, we have been working with a general agenda that's divided into different projects and it creates different sub agendas. And the idea here is to delegate the decision making process. Why? Because all the work has to do with research and work field, sorry, field work. So there are many things that you need to determine as a preliminary evaluation, you need to determine what things are doable or feasible. So talking about the structure, we have this organization, we have a coordination, and this coordination has the facility to accompany or monitor, track the operational staff that's working on those, on those projects of uh, services. So we also have some regular meetings that helps us evaluate or assess if we are working uh, or if we are heading on the right path. And if we have any kind of situation that is becoming an obstacle to reach our goals, then we start collaborative work with those people that uh, can help with a brainstorm and we can develop new strategies. Maybe we can modify the method or the ways, but we keep our goals intact. So this is a very recurrent situation. Why? Because we are working with human beings. So of course, difficulties arise. Uh, there are specific cases or specific things or issues that need to be addressed in a different way. We have a range of options in order to give solution to those little obstacles. But of course, we will always have difficulties that have even led us to look for different tools or different methods that we never knew we never knew we had. So basically what I'm saying is that we need to work with open communication with flexibility and trying to keep uh, direct information with those people that are funding the projects. Always talking about the difficulties. For instance, one of the projects that we're working with, there is one project that focuses on children and teenagers. So we have a association that uh, helps us with us. These are teenagers and children that are recruited by criminal organizations. So. Uh, we are always in constant communication in order to look for new strategies for self-care for those people who are working directly with these children and in order to facilitate the services for these children. So those are one of those challenges 
that make it complicated and that make the decision making process very complicated or complex. So it's part of our experience and the situations that we live in our day to day life. Thank you, Fer. I see that something we have in common is communication. Effective communication is a topic that is popping up throughout this conversation. How we can convey a clear message, how we can work with the delegation, how we can create autonomy for people or individuals. So when talking about powerful conversations, something that we do is self-reflection. How are you communicating? Is there anything that you can do differently? So we ask this question constantly. Maybe you need to change your conversation because maybe if there's not a moderator that is keeping track of the time or a technical person that is uh, a tech support who's in charge of the microphone, the cameras, etc. We need to have perfect organization. We need to agree on certain things in order for us to to actually collaborate effectively. So let me see the second question. I don't remember if our time is up, if it's up 12.50. Can you let us know in the chat what time we're supposed to finish? But we have this one, which is planning, planning um, objectives, organizational objectives, and local objectives. I don't know if we can discuss this one. Oh, I also saw conversations with donors. I didn't see that one, but yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I skipped that one. Conversation with donors. It was hard to give it a follow-up. Okay. Yeah, Fernando was telling us something about the donors. I have a couple of experiences to share. I think that the donors had uh, had a similar situation uh, as us. They had limited budget. They needed to do uh, or to make a big effort. They needed mm -hmm. to be assertive when investing, for instance. And they needed us to to give them some ideas, mm -hmm. some proposals, and to be honest. Mm -hmm. So that is what I what I understand from people who have those roles, donors. They're regular people just like us, but of course they belong uh, to an organization that has the funds. And one thing that worked for us and that I would recommend is to make the donors part of some of the questions that we have. That is my advice. Nobody has the perfect recipe of what to do in a very complex and changing context. Of course, we should have certain clarity and intuition, but I think that uh, getting closer with the donors is a good idea. Just ask them, hey, or tell them, we're thinking about this, we propose this, what's your opinion on this? So you need to generate that kind of engagement with them. Ask for advice. When you ask for advice, you always contribute with ideas in order to make your project more solid. So that is something that we have observed and that is very valuable. And the second one, you need to keep it alive. If you are reflecting on things every three months or if you have different learning curves, 
you need to meet frequently and you need to be able to share frequently those learnings. Sometimes we think that we have nothing to share, nothing to tell, but honestly, after your self-reflection, of course, you have some contribution, right? Maybe you're thinking that other people are expecting something from you, mm -hmm. but it's important to put it into words and to always exchange the learnings, lessons learned. And finally, nowadays that we're living these difficult times, resilience times, I think it's very important to be honest, to share our dreams, to share our view, even if it seems crazy or even naive, it's important to be able to talk about those things that we imagine. Even if there are certain problems, we need to discuss those. And in this way, you can generate or build this empathy with the donors because the, they are our, our close actors. So we need to have them near us because they are funding, they're funding some of our projects. Rox, may I go? So in our case, we have been working with uh, this round tables with the donors and we're talking about the suppliers of information and we need to tell them about all the problems or challenges that we have identified, how the new phenomenon uh, is behaving we need to have the same view, all of us, we need to have the same view so we can all head into the right direction. So when you start working with a donor, you definitely need to discuss all of these things in order to promote development and that you are heading into the right direction. So definitely having this exchange of ideas, discuss your work agenda, maybe, you don't need to wait for those times that they have designated or that you have designated. But in the everyday life, you can reach out to them or they can reach out to you. So in this way, we can keep this communication flow open and this can make wonders for us and, and in terms of goals and objectives. So that is a view that we need to share. We, we are responsible to provide this data, this information, this context. We need to let them know how the con context is transforming or changing. So for us, this experience of exchange of ideas has been very uh, fav favorable. Previously, we had one or two funding associations. Now we have way more. And when I say way more, I'm talking about five or six more donors plus the ones that we already have. So definitely this method has allowed us to identify if we're doing things right, where we need to work because we are growing the, the amount of people that the organization has. So it is very important to comply with both our philosophy and their philosophy. So we need to be very respectful in terms of our philosophical views because each institution has a different culture or philosophy. So if you respect theirs and they respect yours, you are favoring respect and mutual understanding. Okay, great. So our time is up. Now it's time for you to go to the other rooms. So uh, thank you very much, Mario Fer, for being here with us and sharing. Any final words that you would like to give us? Thank you very much, Rox. Thank you, Mario. Thank you for allowing us share with you, and thank you for the people that are uh, joined that joined us today. So I hope it, this was helpful for them. Same thing. Thank you very much, Rox. Thank you, Fer. 
I love this space. Uh, it was great to share our ideas. Thank you, Andrea, and the whole team at HIP. Thank you very much. And I hope that at least one of one or two things that we mentioned resonated with you. If you have any questions, you have our data so we can keep in touch and, and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rox, for guiding us. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Big hug. See you later. Bye.